All right, Dustin, big big one ahead, Dominic Reyes. That's uh, for a lot of people that know the sport. That's a that's a big name in front of you. What uh, what do you think about this matchup? I love the matchup, man, and and uh, I'm very well aware Dominic Reyes is a big name. He's one of the best guys in the division. Um, you know, he's on a little bit of a skid right now, but this is not an easy job. It's a tough job to do, and he's fought a murderer's row of individuals. And, um, you know, I, I know I have my hands full. I know Dom's going to be dangerous, and I'm really looking forward to the opportunity of, of taking out um, a so-called legend and, and building my legacy. Have you Have you heard it all? kind of what he's been going through because we were speaking to him yesterday and uh, he said he, he was dealing with some blood clots in his leg. Um, that's why the Alberg fight obviously wasn't going through. Oh, really? But he was told by doctors because of the blood clots that he was living day to day with these blood clots. Like the doctors straight up told him like, listen, this is, this is a day to day diagnosis. And if you wake up the next day, it's good. And if you don't wake up the next day, then it's not a good thing. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I did not know that. <clears throat> I thought he was. I thought he hurt his shoulder. Um, but again, I'm not. I'm not uh, too involved with the media. I don't. I don't follow up on a lot of stuff. I kind of stay in my own lane. But um, yeah, man. Hopefully, he, he's doing well. And um, you know, I don't wish that on anybody. And uh, I know he's had a tough road. So, so to throw that in the mix as well is uh, never a good thing. But. Um, you know, I, I'm sure he's very well prepared for this fight and has put that behind him and, and uh, going to be the best version of himself on Saturday night. Yeah, he's also said he kind of he feels like he's gotten back to the Dominic Reyes who was fighting John Jones, who was slick in there, who was rolling with the punches. So do you expect him to come forward like he did in the Yuri fight or are you expecting more of like a counter puncher, you know, kind of picking his shots type Dom Reyes? You know... It... <sighs> I'm pre I'm prepared for both. Uh, you know, I, I'm very well prepared. It's my job to go in there and execute. Um, you know, I he, he could come forward. He could stay back. Either either way, I, I think that he's going to go in there. He, he uh, looking for the kill. I think that um, you know he, his back's against the wall. I think he knows that, and uh, he's got to go out there and make something happen. And uh, you know, I'm expecting the best Dominic Reyes, uh, the, the the best version there is. You know, I, I have no doubt that he's going to be on that night. And, again, man, I'm just looking forward to the opportunity to go in there and, and face a guy like him. He's definitely one of the best guys in the division. And uh, I think that says a lot about me, about where I'm at. And, uh, you know, to have this opportunity is uh, – I'm very grateful for it. Um, I kind of wanted to ask about a clip that I saw you respond to. It was It was somebody was talking on Joe Rogan. And she was talking about mental health and she was saying, you know, sitting around and thinking about your problems is a bad habit and literally getting up and doing anything is better than sitting around and looking at your problems, like going to the, even going to the store and, and picking up groceries is better. And you responded, I think you put the, the 100 emoji or something like that, but I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, man, you got to stay busy. You got to stay active. You can't just sit there and dwell on things. It's the worst thing you can do. You know, a lot of times we are our, our own worst enemy and life is tough, man. It's not easy. Um, you, you can't just sit back and just think about your problems because you'll just create more problems. You'll just keep thinking about negative and negativity affects you negatively 100% of the time. Um, you know, you got to get up, you got to get active, do a little bit of exercise, uh, read a good book, surround yourself with positive people. I'm very well aware that mental health is an issue. Um, thankfully it's not something that I battle with and it's not that I don't, it's just, I don't focus on it. I, I try, I try not to focus on that, man. I try to, I try to be positive. I try to focus on the, the better things in life, the quality, the, the finer things in life, the, uh, things that make me happy. Um, again, man, negativity affects you negatively a hundred percent of the time. So, um, you can, you cannot, uh, have a negative mindset and you always have to have a positive attitude and, and, uh, put a smile on your face, man, and keep moving. And another thing, yeah, people, uh, you know, mental health problems, they kind of, yeah, they just sit in a dark room and, and don't do much. And that's not good, man. You got to get out and see some sunlight and, and talk to people and, and, uh, be active. Did you, I want to switch gears a little bit here, but. 
Were you annoyed a little bit at how Alonzo Menafield fought his last fight against Carlos Oldberg? Oh. Like, were you not like, man, why couldn't you have just done that to me and I could have countered you right off the bat? I, I really was, man. I mean, I fought like he, I felt like he fought a pretty conservative fight with me, kind of stayed back, and then he just went crazy at the beginning. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, why? How did he not do that with me? It just makes you so much more vulnerable and so much easier to attack. I don't know what he was thinking, man. Um, I, I'm sure he doesn't know either. I'm sure he, he deeply regrets that and uh, could have fought a much better fight. But uh, kudos to Olberg for capitalizing on the opportunity. And MMA, man, that's a great example of, you know, you lo I lose the Minifield fight. I'm like, man, I was right there. Like, I win that fight, and, and I've got so many opportunities, so many options. You lose that fight, and it feels like the end of the world. But then you go and you have an opportunity to fight a guy like Dominic Reyes, and I go get a big win, man. It's like you're you're now back on top of the mountain. You're thrown right back into the mix, and um, yeah, MMA is a funny game, man. You lose, and it's the end, and you win, and so many doors are open. Yeah, I mean, thirty six years young, right? What what keeps you motivated to do this at the end of the day? When you wake up in the morning, you know what makes you want to say, "Hey, I still want to do this. I still want to reach the top level." Yeah, man, just uh, it's that burning uh, desire that's always been inside of me, uh, the, the burning desire for greatness, the, to be the best version of myself. Um, you know, and it, it is tough that the older I get, you know, I'm not that 22 year old kid anymore. I remember I used to go to the gym. I couldn't wait to wrestle, grapple, punch you in the face. And now there's days I wake up. It's like, man, I don't want to do any of that. Like I, I want to train, but I just don't, I just don't want to fight you. Uh, you know, it's like, get off me and get away from me. But, um, you know, and just having fun with it, man, Be being around the guys. I've always been a locker room guy. You know, I've always played sports. Uh, I just enjoy the teammates. I, en I enjoy my friends, my teammates, my coaches, uh, be being in the gym, sweating, being active. And uh, th that's what motivates me. And, and just, uh, you know, be being it makes me happy. And, and going to the gym and, and, and you know, being active, seeing everybody, that makes me happy, man. That's what keeps me going. And then uh, the opportunity, you know, to be the man in the arena. I, I love competing. I, I love that. Um, you know, I love the bright lights. I, I love when when you're actually in there and it's time to go. And, and I feed off of that, man. So uh, it keeps me coming back. It's, it's kind of interesting that you say that when you're like to guys at the gym, like, look, man, I don't want to fight you because I think we heard Tyron Woodley say when he got older in the game, he said, you know, I don't know if I can hurt these guys the way I did earlier in my career. He's like, some of these guys I would rather go out and have a beer with or have dinner with and get in there in the octagon and fight them. But is that, do you still have that attitude? Like, hey, man, I can be nice outside of the octagon, but I'm still ready to go in there and take anybody out. Oh, 100%, man. And, and you have to. You know, when I, when I, the, the moment comes that I'm not ready to go in there and hurt the, the guy and take the guy out. Uh, that's when I know it's time to, to, to give it up. You know, at the, at the end of the day, you can play football, you can play basketball, you can't really play fighting. Um, you know, you have to be all in. Or otherwise, you know, you, you could get really hurt. And, uh, you know, it's one thing to go play a game, but you can't really play fighting, man. You're talking about getting knocked out. You're talking about physically hurting your body, hurting yourself. Um so once I, you know, in the gym, it's one thing I go in there and train and, and uh, you know, not want to get after it on certain days. But when it's time to step into that octagon and it's time to fight, uh, there's never a doubt in my mind that I got to do what I, what I signed up to do. And that hasn't left me yet. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure someday it will. And I'm sure that's when I'll know that it's, it's time to, you know, we're not playing this game anymore. Uh, but as of right now, man, I still have that burning desire to to climb this this ladder to to get into the top ten, and you know I have some uh, some unfinished business with guys at the top of this division, Khalil Roundtree, uh, the, the the champion, a very scary dude. I fought in Glory Kickboxing, you know I'd I'd love to avenge that in, in MMA or at least try to, you know, and that's uh, that's what keeps me going is fights like that. Hey Dustin, hey. Um, so going into this fight, um, if you get a similar victory to say your Kennedy fight, right? UFC Denver, UFC just announced that officially. Um, is that the call out you want? Is it short turnaround fight in Denver where you, where you, uh, do your fight camps now? Yeah, man. I think that would be cool at the same time. Uh, we already have a couple, I have a couple teammates on the card. Um, I'm sure there's going to, I have a few teammates on the card. I, I'm sure there'll be a couple more, um, 
and I, I think I'm gonna, you know, let them do their thing and kind of, kind of stay in my own lane. I do have a call out, you know, with a big victory, and it has nothing to do with fighting. It's the American Century Championship Celebrity Golf Tournament. Uh, you know, golf is a, a big passion of mine. One of my favorite pastimes, probably my favorite pastime. Single digit handicap golfer. I would love to to get on the mic and, and call for that spot. Um, it's next month. It's, uh, you know, the best celebrity golfers. I'd love to represent the sport of mixed martial arts. I'd love to represent the UFC. I know uh, Canelo Alvarez is in there. Um, so, you know, that's going to be my call out. And, you know, I'm going to let the, those guys fight Endeavor. I'm going to let them enjoy their moment and have their time. And uh, I'll get another fight uh, on the books sooner than later with a, with a big win early on. Perfect. Um, speaking of golf, uh get you back at the Barstool Classic sometime soon? Man, I just played in it. Uh, my partner and I just played at Rain Dance National. Uh, we shot six under a two-man best ball and missed the cut by a stroke. And, and we thought we had, we had made it, and a late scorecard came in. So they have live scoring uh, during the event. And there were four teams that didn't do the live scoring. So we just kind of figured that those teams, like you know, they were just there to have fun. They didn't care about the score. So we turned all the scorecards in. Uh, we saw we were top four, so we were, like, elated. We we were so relieved. We're like, no way, because I've done it for four years in a row. And we're like, we finally advanced. You know, the top four teams advance. And I made the putt and, and, uh, in the putt challenge, so we were getting ready to do that. And the guy comes up. He's like, hey, you guys were uh, you guys were in the top four, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, well, one of those teams that came in, they were, they were uh, eight under, so it knocked us out. And, uh, yeah, man, Barstow Classic is one of my favorite events. I look forward to it every year. Uh, those guys are awesome. They also hooked me up with a, a pass to, to be able to ensure that I'm, you know, playing in the event. So uh, very grateful for those guys. Best of luck, brother. Thank you, man. Actually, I just got, I got one more for you. The Khalil fight. Like, how badly do you want that one back? Oh, man, I really want that one back. Again, this is the same with, with Minifield. I, I tell everybody I don't think the better fighter won that night. You know, Minifield got me. Um, and that's no knock on Minifield. Dangerous guy. Same with Khalil Roundtree, man. I did, and not, it's not that the better fighter didn't win. I feel like I just I won that fight. I mean, if you look at the DraftKings, I think I was like minus 700 going into the final decision. The fight, the fight was over, and it's like here's minus 700 on me, and they named him. And that's a fight, man, I definitely want back. But I know I, I know, I looked at Khalil square in the eye right after that fight. I walked right up to him. I was like, hey, man, you're a warrior. And he looked right at me. He's like, man, I just wanted to prove to you that I wasn't a pussy. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, I heard you were saying I was a pussy. I was like, bro, I never said you were a pussy. I was like, I said you're mentally weaker than you are physically. I was like, physically, you're a beast. But mentally, it's something we all have to work on. And just that little encounter we had, like I saw it in his eyes. He knew that I won and I knew that I won. And I, I was waiting to hear the, the decision with my name. And it didn't happen. And that one, uh, that one eats to me because now look at Khalil, where he's at. And, of course, he had his little mishap, whatever, with the, with the drug testing. But, I mean, he was in a co-main event for the biggest card of the year, you know, one of the biggest cards. And, and with a win, which I thought he probably would have got done, um, puts him in a title fight. And just to know that I was right there, um, again, no disrespect to him. He's a great fighter. I'm not saying he's a, he's a pushover. I just think I won that fight, and um, I would love to get that back. And then um, this actually came out this morning. Um, Jamal Hill kind of put out a post saying that he didn't like um, the post-fight taunting of Alex Pereira after he finished him at UFC 300. He said, look, man, um, I was respectful to your guy when I fought him in Brazil and Glover, and uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't like the way you handled that. I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that as well. I mean, he was he was in the moment, man. We all do things right after the fight, and I don't think he did anything too crazy. He just did his little like, you know. I I thought it was actually pretty cool. You know, it's a. I didn't think it was over the top. I thought that uh, it was a. Uh, you see, I knew it. It was a, a sign of confidence on prayer. Like he knew that's what was going to happen, and. Uh, Man, more, more power to prayer. What an, it's incredible what he's been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. And he's kind of got that aura about him that now people, uh, you have to fight that aura. Not just him, but now you got to fight that aura around him. And, um, yeah, I don't think it was too bad. I thought it was actually, you know, it was pretty cool. And, and uh, just like it just, it, it, it just shined confidence from Pereira.